26. I've got the 24 meeting. I've got them after planning with the order. 7.35 p.m. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with Section 3D of Chapter 231 of the Public Order of 1975. Following notice of Sunshine Ball. Paul Colfish. Paul Murr. Here. Jose Reyes. Here. Judy Nelson. Here. Grace Ann Kelly. Here. Ryan Messinger. Here. Jose Medeiros. Philip Bellin. Here. Brad Nelson. Here. Ken Chalet. Here. Jeff Coletti. Here. Steve DiLorenzo. Here. Daniel McDonald. Here. And Megan. Here. Rise and play. I pledge to the the republic for general agenda specific questions. So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Suzanne. Suzanne Wilder, 424 Charlestown. Road. I know we're not public comment on the board. I just want to apologize for that. Last time I was here saying you were reviewing something without section BEF, there was a confusion of what we were looking at. And you must think I'm crazy, which I am, but not because of this. So I was more confused with this issue than crazy. So I want to apologize for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Motion close. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So Megan Stanley is here tonight um, for answers to the questions that the board had at our late meeting on general comments and concerns that we have as far as moving forward with getting our documentation in order for public release. Um, so we have a, a list of questions, um, that are in the packet. I'm going to have, uh, Ryan to go through each of the questions for us, and Meg is going to give an answer to what that question was. And then if there's any further comments by the board, this is the time to make that. So after this, Meg is going to take it, take what we say tonight, get out a document, and hopefully get it. Submitted and we can get it uh, published for public comments. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you for joining us. Um, and I think you obviously had a chance to see some of these questions ahead of time, so you're not going to get blindsided into this. But, um, so we'll just kind of start at the top of the list and work our way down. Uh, so the first question that came up during our last meeting was Do you currently possess a farmland preservation plan? So yeah, the answer to that, I'm currently not, at least not one that can get you funding from the state. Um, they have released grants to um, like to prepare these if you are looking to prepare a farmland preservation plan. There are requirements that are needed for that. Um, the town of Thank you for his attention. Uh, let's say subject line, these are talks to the top of the SP president. Oh, I'm going to talk to the SP president. Yeah, just do a piece of new mute, please. All right. Thank you. It's muted now. Okay. <laughs> right. So, yeah, if this was something that the township was looking at, um, it would require an advisory committee to take that um, under control and start looking to develop that plan. Short answer, you do not find What would the grant funding uh, be for? Like, what, what would be the, the benefits of the grant funding that we had planned? So, I'm trying to figure out the ratio of what's left to preserve versus that grant. Yeah, and I haven't, I haven't looked at what is preserved as a whole in the township. I, uh, but if there's certain smaller farms that you're looking to preserve, if there's like, you know, donut holes here or there, um, otherwise, it's the county, Hunter and Half County, have a really good farmland preservation plan. If there are not specific farms that you're targeting, I, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's, I would say it's worth looking at. No, I mean, we Yeah. So we have a pretty high, I don't know, I shouldn't, I'm not going to quote the percentage, and probably a pretty high percentage of preserved farm land. So I was trying to figure out the ratio was to, instead of the, you know, you know, you know. Yeah, and 
if you talk about lean land, if you know there's landowner interest and say the county, you know, has other priorities, it's worth it in that sense too. Thank you. All right, uh, next question was regarding the 173 land use plan element, uh, when can we anticipate receiving a draft of that document? Yep, so similar to the way the read has been done, we've been working on the background elements, so we've been doing all the mapping. Uh, we've been looking at doing a, a full land use analysis to understand what's there. Um, so where we are now, and I think we could probably roll in some early comments in our public input session um, next month, um, just some input on the uh, on 173, but the next step is really going to be a full outreach um, session on the plan. So I, you know, I, I would imagine probably the end of summer-ish is kind of when we can, I would think that something could be completed by. Question? Mm -hmm. uh, when are we going to receive some sort of draft? Because you say uh, open public input, but we don't have anything to react. When are we going to get a draft? No, agreed. Yeah, this is, I think, I'm not totally sure yet when that's going to happen. I think we're going to have, um, Discussions too at the uh, with the township too. Um, exactly what the process is going to be is going to look like as far as public input goes. Um, but I think it's probably going to look at. In my head, it's going to be like an outreach thing where you know we go through a PowerPoint that shows you know what's there, what's available, and really just get the input first, then get the recommendations, and then send the full plan to you. Is kind of how I see it in my head, but you know that's not obviously for discussion. So could we get like, um, you know how you and I went through and did a plan of, of timing? Can we do something like that so that we have yeah. it so that we know what we're working against? Yeah, now that this part is kind of winding down, I think that's where we're listening to that. And as I understand it, the 173 corridor is being done through the township committee. So like all the drafting and, and that will go through them rather than us or no? It is a planning board document. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be adopted as a planning board. But until we have that outreach, I guess we don't really have anything to add to the plan. I mean, other than facts. Yeah, but it's not, there's not a whole lot of like actual substance about what to do there. That's where it's, you know, I, that's why I'm kind of hoping to do the outreach first to get a full comprehensive plan to you to look at all at once instead of piecemeal. Like this kind of like the, the reasoning kind of makes a little bit more sense piecemeal, but um, something like this needs to be a bit more comprehensive. But once we get that outreach and all that, uh, those comments, will we see a draft to comment? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because this will be a and then we'll have yeah. further discussion yeah. and now. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. And just for clarification, I guess too, um, is this is that element separate and apart from the master plan reexamination? It is. It's um it's a land use element, so it's you know just and it's a separate element of the actual the full comprehensive master plan. Whereas this is a re-exam of the comprehensive master plan, the land use element becomes technically part of the comprehensive master plan. So, from a timing perspective, does it matter that we're having conversations about the re-examination now, and you're talking about in the summer for the land use element, which will probably be after we do the re-examination? I think it's, I think the reason is a good setup to it to kind of look at what the existing land use policies and start kind of coming up with the background to the 173 land use plan element, um, kind of getting your ducks in a row with the, with the re-exam and now looking at, you know, uh, and just getting that feedback too, and then going back to the land use plan element. I don't, I, I think they can easily be, I don't think the timing really matters so much personally, but. Is it or is it part of the master plan? This element. It is. It is. Yeah. So we'll, we'll approve the master plan, and then we'll look at this, or we won't approve it until we look at this. You'll approve the re-exam first, and then this is kind of where, like the the master plan element, you know, it gets a little weird. I completely agree. Um, so we're we you have the the original master plan. Um, a comprehensive master plan element. And it kind of where it gets confusing because most towns don't redo the comprehensive master plan because it's such a big undertaking. So you have the re exam that does it every 10 years. That's what we're doing now. Um, so this becomes kind of you know what you look at for next time. But what the land use plan technically becomes part of is the original comprehensive master plan as an appendix to it. 
There's an element to it. And we shouldn't expect any surprises from this particular start, uh, study <clears throat> compared to the master plan. There shouldn't be any difference or something comes up that may contradict the master plan. No, I don't think absolutely not because that, I mean, that's kind of why I thought it, you know, it made sense to look at the re-exam first just to kind of see where you're at as a full town first and see where it makes sense to go, what issues are currently available. Because that's going to affect the 173 master plan, like all the land use issues that are currently going into the township. Is it too early to ask what kind of issues and areas you're going to look into with the 173 plan? Well, a lot of us are already beginning, like the, the reason starts to set that up because we're starting to, you know, the, the recommendations to sort of look at different uses that would make sense um, in the 173 corridor. Um, it starts to set up possible rezoning, um, not rezoning, but like maybe um, consolidating certain districts along the 173 corridor. It's just starting to kind of set it up and we're, we're going to take the 173 corridor and really dive into what those recommendations say. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So the, the discussion or the approval of the master plan doesn't dictate, like we still have the ability as a board to make whatever decision you want. We're not being yeah, able to make Yeah, it's, it's, yeah exactly. it's policy that, that uh, I'm sorry, it's policy that uh, Turns into ordinances eventually. It's not, but yeah, exactly. Fair. So, is it fair to say then that the land use plan element, the 173 element, would just need to ultimately be consistent with mm -hmm. the master plan? Right. And, and then, same with the re exam of the 173 land use plan, because it's all working policy. So, it's going forward. Any other questions? Okay, um, will the tier A and B ordinances suffice for the climate hazard vulnerability vulnerability <laughs> assessment, or do we require an additional document? Yeah, that is the climate hazard vulnerability assessment is part of is a requirement of the MLUL. It's completely separate from the um, the, the tier A B ordinances, and it's going to be its own thing. Now, the way the it was decided when it, it's whenever you do a land use plan element. So the 173 land use plan element does trigger the need for a climate hazard called um, the CHVA. And the way it was decided with Highlands was that because looking at 173 as a whole, just as like an economic development type standpoint, it's going to be its, you know, its own animal, they have more funding and they they said that it would be available to go back then after the land use plan element is done to prepare the CHVA and then append that to the land use element. Okay. Uh, is the completion of the new environmental resource inventory a uh, prerequisite before finalizing the master plan? No, it's its own thing. It just ends up being an appendix to the master plan at a later date, whenever it's finished. Uh, concerning the Bethlehem Township Preserve Lands Map, Greenway and Open Space Plan and Recreation Plan element, are these documents finalized or do they require updates? Uh, will it be filed as part of the master plan and do they need to update before the master plan can be filed? Yeah, again, these are these are separate documents and it's if the township is looking to update the open space plan or any kind of mapping, this is something that can be done with Highland funding, which I do understand they do have a decent amount of and are looking to have you know, projects. Okay. Uh, can we incorporate language in a community energy plan to indicate that Bethlehem Township should continue monitoring its viability? And are there any available grants for this purpose? So I think I answered this question totally, but um, I may have misunderstood the question a little bit, but I will say, um, so yeah, the community energy plan is, is a pretty new plan. Um, only a handful of towns have done them already through BPU's um, funding that became available like maybe last year or two years ago. Um, so the township can kind of put whatever they want in the plan. There's a set of requirements, but they can you know you can also make do your own thing and put what you need in the plan. And part of that, I, I did one recently where it um, we included a, a recommendation to 
monitor this plan every five years or three years or so um, because the technology updates is constantly changing to see you know things change so you know BPU is now having implementation grants available for these plans once you have one adopted so you can really like if it's in a plan you can go for perfect grants mm -hmm. for that. The CEP is more of a, an economic uh, incentive plan rather than uh, recognition of like environmental sustainability. Is that... No, it is actually going through. So if you if you get the grant, um, Sustainable Jersey essentially gives you 39 initiatives and they have to do with um, just kind of evaluating what you want to be as a town where to put, you know, if and where you want to put solar panels or do community solar projects. Um, electric charging stations, that type of thing. Um, different, uh, you can actually add in like different types of master plan elements. The one we recently did the circulation elements to kind of get public transportation and bike share type things. So it is, um, it's very heavily over there. Like sustainable Jersey is on the forefront of this. So it is like in that vein. Yeah. Uh, are there grants available for resiliency projects and can we request monitoring potential for potential methane leaks? Yeah, there, um, this is one I was not totally sure about how to answer, um, but I do know, I mean, in general, there are, you know, DP has resili resiliency projects available or grants for projects available. Um, these are, these tend to be really competitive. Um, so if the township does have an interest in these types of plans, then they they kind of need to be shovel ready. You know, a lot of towns will you know go out to RFP already before these grants are even so they can you know they have quotes or you know engineering quotes and that type of thing. Uh, regarding land use ordinances, while the zoning category seems satisfactory, can we modify the example provided in each category based on community input? And yeah, that's going to be that'll be part of the presentation to get that community input. Uh, in terms of rezoning, can we express the goal of rectifying split zoning throughout the township? How do we obtain owner confirmation for changing from a split zone? Yeah, so this the reason I you know I don't like split zoning is it creates a it creates a, a problem for the landowner typically. You know, these zones are typically drawn in GIS, like on a you know arbitrary line that kind of looks right and you know it, it's not on a survey and then you know it becomes where where does it <laughs> where does it make sense to put the line and you know where a lot of the where a lot of the uh the lots are split zone. It's you know it's the commercial with the mountain residential in the back, which is going to already have this. At, at that point, it's landlocked. You know, all the way in the back, it's highly um, it's highly forested, and you're going to run into highlands issues that's like in that back area anyway. So I think um, I mean I think there's justification for those split zone lots um, to get rid of them. Um, I'm not, you know, unless you know, anyone else had you know, other ideas that I can also add into the plan. I did add, I don't know, I have the quote there, what I added to kind of beef up that recommendation. But, um, but yeah, I, so once you get to that rezoning, you know, you go to the, the, the clerk, the tax assessor to get that confirmation. And once they're rezoning, those, no, those owners are going to be notified. So if there is any problem, you know, they're, they have the ability to come and say so if they have a problem, problem with it. Are we going to have uh, some form of criteria to make those decisions, written criteria for each of the, for all the lots, so we could systematically look at which way to go? Mm -hmm. Should it be this or be that? But is there going to be a, any criteria? Well, the good thing, I, I don't know, but most of the lots are along 173 and it's been part of the 173 corridor study to go looking at and identifying every single one so we've already gone through the process where we're almost there to recap what those you know which lots there are um i know here like recently they had the one the one residential lot that we had a couple months ago came in for the split zoning and i do i'm sure there's a couple of those in town it's just be a matter of just kind of identifying those on the zoning map but we do have i would say most of them down already but again, how are you going to decide which should be totally one way or totally the other way? 
What's your criteria to determine that? It's going to be what eh, as in your um, recommendation, but it, it'll all around, it'll uh, you know be up to the town how you want to do it. But the recommendation we put in there is what makes the most sense based on what else is around it, especially uh, oh, especially along the street fronts. And would be will we come close to spot zoning in doing this? No, because it's going to be what the other no, what you know what. The zoning going to be consistent because it already has a front lot is you know part of the lot is I'll say highway commercial you know the other lots are likely going to be highway commercial and you're just going to you know kind of round up people clean it up essentially it's really a clean up more so than anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, can we eliminate warehousing from our ordinances or if not how can we strengthen language to prevent warehouses in our township? Yeah, so it's already not permitted uh, per a zoning amendment from I think early 2000s actually. Um, but one thing I did recommend is that wherever warehousing comes up, whether it be, I don't remember if it was in the definition, there's a couple places where re warehousing is referenced and it's just a matter of you know, cleaning that up and just getting out of there. Um, and then the one thing to kind of beef up this recommendation is to I looked at the Highlands policy that came out in September um, in regards to this area. And there are specific areas within the Highlands that they do not recommend. It's just essentially a no-go zone for warehouse zoning. And pretty much the entire township is in a no-go zone. So just to kind of concrete that, I put that recommendation in there. So it's very you know, it's clear that these Highlands isn't okay with putting their houses in Bethlehem. Is this the same for truck stops? Um, as far as not wanting them in the township, yeah. Um, I know that oh, the truck stops apply to be in the water are typically, I'm assuming, in the 173 corridor, right? They're allowed to be, and I think that's something that, um, will I don't know that it's necessarily appropriate to call them out here. Um, I think it'll be more appropriate in the 173 corridor where we're actually looking at what uses make sense, okay? But if you can't do it at that point. We say no truck stops allowed. Can yeah, we do that. Yeah, that, yeah. We can, that can be included as a recommendation if okay. the township wants. Can you clarify the difference between saying that something is not permitted versus, versus it's prohibited? <laughs> yeah, I um, <clears throat> Yeah, so for that, it's. I would say, and it, yeah, it's, it's a tough question to answer. But I mean, you, you put prohibited in there, and that kind of starts to get at different you know, legal questions uh, when you call something out specifically like that. Um, to say that it's not permitted, uh, to me, it's more of like it looks like you've looked at these zones and decided it is not appropriate. Um, it just takes a lot of the, you know, the legal ambiguity out of it a little bit more. Wait, which maybe we, we say, did what's not <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I say more. Yeah, to say just not permitting it. I, I you know, I, I don't think you know calling it out. It's just I think it opens up the door to say, well, you know, if you're viewing that you're specifically excluding this. And disease. okay, and then I guess my next question is it sounds like we're relying on the guidance of Highlands to create the, the lack of permission, I guess, for, for this, right? Mm -hmm. Do we want to entirely rely on an outside body to make that determination for us? Or would it make more sense to have some kind of language within our own Bethlehem Township Master Plan mm -hmm. that addresses the appropriateness of something like that? So in order to make it in our own words, but maybe consistent. Right. right. In other words, if, for whatever reason, some something happens in the highlands it disappears tomorrow we would be left high and dry yeah um i don't want to answer it right up but I, let me give it some thought and see what kind of language i could put in there that makes sense but yeah that's that's a good point to add that Uh, it's noted that manufacturing light will require manufacturing heavy under 102-8 do you elaborate on this statement and its implications for our township? Yeah. And that's what I need a clarification on to share that exactly the question. I think part of that, I remember we should 
Somewhere there's a recommendation that uses the phrase man for you like manufacturing light. Light manufacturing. In our definitions, we don't have a definition for manufacturing light or manufacturing heavy. <laughs> so we were like confused as to what light means. And then we also have to define heavy. And it's a big part of that. Can we just have a so, I don't know if it's just the manufacturing, right? Just the manufacturing without getting. Well, no, it was, it was two, two splits. Yeah, and I, I remember our conversations with the, I think it was with some community, um, wanting to, or feeling it was appropriate to split those out just so that there's no question as to what either of them mean, because I know there's, Probably an adversity to want you know having heavy manufacturing and what exactly that means. Um, and preferring light manufacturing. Um. Yeah, but on page 53. Yeah. So amend section 102-8. So this is one of the recommendations. Amend section 102-8 entitled definitions to include definitions of agritourism and yeah. tourism oriented business and manufacturing light. Mm -hmm. And then we've suggested definitions for each one of those. And just for an exemplification, uh, manufacturing light defined as an establishment engaged in the transformation of finished products or parts into new products and where all processing, fabricating, assembly, or disassembly of items takes place only within an enclosed building. Yeah, so, okay, what I remember with that was um, there is no definition of manufacturing currently in the ordinance, and I believe in um, our, at least it was in our that manufacturing is permitted, and this is getting at Specifying what type of manufacturing is actually permitted and making sure there's really no question to what that type of manufacturing is expected in town. Yeah, and I think Tara is interested in maybe adding, also adding a definition for heavy and then excluding it for prohibited. Yeah. Yes, if you go to 102 8 is the, the definition of ordinance. Right. There is no manufacturing in there. Right. I mean, a definition for a person with a head injury. <laughs> fun, fun fact, but uh, nothing about manufacturing. Okay, so is the agreement to add a heavy manufacturing? Well, I think the, I think since the recommendation was manufacturing light. Does that then? What does that do if you're manufacturing heavy? Is somebody going to come in and say, is that permitted or not? And so, how do we define it and then prohibit or limit? So I'm wondering if we do uh, include manufacturing light and say specific under that definition, say specifically what it does not include, rather than calling out manufacturing heavy. Okay. Well, and then one or two sixteen is the uh, research and manufacturing districts, right? So from then we could tie that back into like those definitions and put manufacturing. Yeah, so that's that's gonna be part of yeah, what's gonna be looked at closely with Route 173. Um because it's an RM. Yeah. Because the I mean, thing with the RM zone now is um from what I understood there's like the we're gonna be keeping the RM zone, but really looking at the bulk standards and the uses to make sure that they are, you know, things are buildable in that area um, because in the environment zone, you use this currently in there that um, fit that bill of, the, of an arm. So, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so next question regarding ROM. Could you provide further details on its impact and implementation in our township? <clears throat> yeah, so as I just said, um, there are uses that are in that zone now that 
uh, and actually this sounds appropriate. Um, it's more to look at the bulk standards and just to make sure that you, one you want that the use is make sense and that there are things that you want built there. Um, and two that things can actually be built there based on what the current zoning is. And that's this is really just to kind of give you more say over what's in there and kind of just really look at the zoning. It's probably a while since the RO has been looked at and what really makes sense there. So that's really just to make sure it makes sense of what's permitted and what the, uh, the standards are. Uh, we seek more information on dark sky implementation, uh, its community impact, and the availability of grants to make a standard for Bethlehem Township. Yeah, I mean, so dark sky is kind of a feel good thing. I've seen it in a couple of towns up in Hunter County. We've implemented it recently in uh, East Van Law, a couple towns down there. Um, and a lot of times in more rural communities, they're it, it's often a neighbor thing where people don't like the lights. And I mean, it honestly is a is um, an ecological thing too. Um, bright lights can kind of hinder the um, the behaviors of different birds, um, insects, that type of thing. So being in a more rural community, I've seen this pop up and that's really, you know, it just looks nice. <laughs> uh, I am curious though about, um... Your, your comment that it's the, the enforcement is yeah. an issue because I, I guess when I think about issues with lights at night, they tend to be on every night. Like it's a gas station that's got like this giant glow coming from it. So any night you go out there and you could monitor the light and say if this is consistent with our ordinance or not consistent, you know, as opposed to things like no, noise ordinances where like they come and go, if you happen to catch it at the right mm -hmm. time with your noise meter, you know, become very complicated. So I guess. Back to my question is like if we were to develop any ordinance language around dark sky, like does it need to be very specific talking about I don't know, angles of light and you know levels of light and certain yeah, it gets specific with levels of light. Um and it does recommend downward facing or shields that keep the light focused downward. And you know, of course it would it would be more for um new development coming in of course um so which i mean might be a good time to do that too especially if we're looking to you know add uses and stuff to 173 and make sure that that doesn't become completely over you know overrun with just tons of different lighting um, i mean how we did, i'm sorry go ahead Jose. we did use uh such uh what you just recommended in approving the uh Bourbon, Bourbon Street, mm -hmm. right? Bourbon Street, right? Telling them we want lights now. <clears throat> the sign has to be a certain angle, so we could do that in a commercial district, I guess, more than residential. That was my point. Like, how intrusive do we want to be on people's personal property? I get that sometimes it can be annoying, but I mean, how intrusive do we want to be as a, as a you know, formally? Commercial is one thing, residential, I, I wonder. Right. At, at, at the end of the meeting. So I, I Monica did a little bit of research on this, so she has information as far as funding book. So I don't know if it's printing money. Yeah, and if it is, yeah. <laughs> if it is something you wanted to look at, I know. Yeah, we can find it for it. <laughs> I'll, show, I'll show that there's a little bit of balance because I think one of the uh, issues <clears throat> uh, so we'll talk about more in the past maybe in here, but uh, it's, it's personal safety of property in our region. And so we, we saw a lot of that. We saw home invasions, not necessarily in Bethlehem, a lot of that go off. And so we're putting together on a state level within kind of the 78 bar uh, with some of the Somerset Hills mayors and, and other elected officials uh, a subcommittee to address uh, both the theft and then also trying to create programs for the youth that are being pulled into these all of that frames. And so lighting is something that I think may be, you know, I'm going to say integrates and lots people feel more comfortable and a lot of times we tell people to leave lights on uh, if they're seeing increase and, and that sort of home, home breaking. So there's that kind of balance right now. So from a, from a residential standpoint, I can see on a commercial, you want yeah. to regulate a little bit. But on the residential, I think it's more uh, reaching out 
sort of giving information of what type of lightings are out there, what can be done. You know, have seminars on it and among other things, but just reaching out, have an outreach program. Just you can save electricity, you could do this, you could do that. I think residential that may work. Even if it works a little, <laughs> it may work. It sounds like we're kind of having two conversations about dark skies and correct me if I'm wrong, right? There's the conversation that could happen if we decide to pursue an ordinance around it, which is the enforcement piece and things happening on specific properties. And then for the purpose of this exercise, what we're talking about included in the master plan, this would be more impactful for things like site plan reviews and to give us sort of the teeth to mm -hmm. approve a site plan and, and you know require a, a, an applicant to install that kind of way. Right. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the teeth to give at the you know at the planning board level to do that. And I, they're 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 typically split out into residential, commercial, different things. Um, there be call outs for you know, sports fields, that type of thing. It's really it's really stuff like lights should be on, you know, timers or um, motion sensing type thing. Not something that should necessarily be on all night long, but rather encourage the motion sensing that type of thing. Uh, and then it sets hours too from the commercial level or on sports fields and stuff like that. Um, that they must be out or they should be out by 10 or 11 or you know within a half hour of the last event, that type of thing. That it, that's what it includes. Yeah, and information, mm -hmm. provide the information how to do it. Yeah. And a quick look at the um, modeling learning that she referenced um, on Dark Sky. They, they break it down into zones, just like mm -hmm. regular zoning. So you can have different rules for different zones based on the, the, the commercial zone would be different. Like she said, it lights off at 10 o'clock, 10 30, whatever. But you're not residential, and you're going to have to put things on timers, motion detectors, that type of thing will be completely different and mm -hmm. uh, set up that way. Um, so you're not, you know, like I said, when you end up where you're doing your site plan, that we, you have different rules and site plan. Somewhere. Yeah, it's a long, long, comprehensive work, and that's why I think Highland is willing to fund something like that. <laughs> and New England, I think, has a, they have quite a bit. They were like on the forefront of that years ago when we first started going up to, yeah, that's where I first heard Dark Skies in that. And it's a whole concept of um, things. It's um, not just for the aesthetic, but environmentally. Um, it, it, the impacts on that, if you read some of them from these towns and what they investigated, they did the groundwork for it. We can get Highlands funding in order to um, move it forward. But there's an awful lot of benefits to it, too. And with crime and uh, whatnot, I don't believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe they ever did a study on, you know, crime areas with people that left lights on or had this. If you look at now, and I'm just going by what you read and what you see on the news. Places, clocks are lit up, and there's people running up driveways stealing cars. As a matter of fact, it helps them get into the car. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not doubting totally, but we, if we're really serious, which I, I, I mean, you can tell already, I lean towards us doing something like that. It fits us in more ways than one. It really does. So, we should. You know, educate myself even more if we're really, you know, to help our planner too on what we're um, what we're really talking about. Look at other states even, and the East Coast. They're trying to get the East Coast also to do that because we're well with. More ways than one. I think a flight at night up and down the East Coast. Correct. Oh, I look at all these neighborhoods that are just totally lit up all night long yeah. for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your information, I know the Environmental Commission will probably recommend that mm -hmm. as we review the master plan. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, next question. Uh, how would a municipal permitting program integrate with farmland preservation? Uh, could you provide insights into its potential implementation? Yeah, so under, under the state guidance, um, Townships are allowed to implement permitting if it is foreseen that a specific event is going to negatively impact or have a high impact on the township. So if you're expecting 
the need for township garbage collection or um, officers to guide your, for traffic purposes. Um, I believe uh, the SADC does have some guidance as far as what that type of permitting and paperwork can look like, but it's essentially like renting, you know, renting at a, a township facility type situation or like a park where you would have, you know, grant a permit for that. That's how that would kind of play in. And most of the things I've seen on this, uh, the towns have a limit of how often it could be done in one particular site. Mm -hmm. Like you can't do this every weekend type of thing. Right, that's actually at the state too. The state, um, the, 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 the law on that. I just wonder if they went into such detail as like the after effects of that with trash and litter and I mean, it was pretty broad, you know, what they, what um, the Murphy administration that pushed through with that. You know, if you read some of it, it's really quite extensive what can be done with farms and with the ag, um, agricultural development. But what, you know, I, I wonder how intense it is though with the litter and that, whether if we, we need something a little bit more for ourselves here in our, Especially if you want to push our tourism, and, and we do that, we have to have some Side. parameters. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, I'd say um, it depends on the types of farms you have here. Because I mean, if you have say like wineries or that type of thing that are doing weddings, that's usually self-contained for the most part. But if a lot of the farms, that's that type of thing where you do see. <laughs> Uh, where you do see a lot of people coming in from all over the place for you know that type of thing. That's I think where where you want to implement permitting. All right. Uh, the board is interested in publicly accessible open space properties. Are there any grant opportunities available for such projects? Yeah, three acres love doing it. <laughs> I mean, you know, you gotta make sure you read the fine print, but it's there. All right. Uh, please include in section D the necessity to improve traffic on secondary roads, address issues with bridges like the Iron Bridge, and consider rerouting trucks during incidents on primary roads and major thoroughfares like Route 78. Yeah, that was one where I just needed to kind of understand where that was coming from and what the rect organization you were looking at. Um, yeah, I recall, I mean, the issue is the, is, well, there's a number of issues, but I think the <laughs> rerouted truck traffic through town, uh, certainly when there is an incident on 78, there's a lot of traffic that goes on 73. Some of those trucks wind up working through other secondary roads. Uh, creating problems, and you know, and then there's obviously one off incidents like what happened to Iron Bridge, uh, where you know, an oversized truck was utilizing that road. So, I think it became a question of is there anything we should try and incorporate to deal with those issues? Yeah, I mean, the checking about it's not really a master planning problem, I'll say. Um, it's not because, well, especially roads are the state road, it's, it's all under DOT, so um. I mean, it might be coordination more with the problem is we have the state and the county, right? And then township. So, yeah, there's no say that we have over 173, unfortunately, because that is a state highway. And the county roads, we have no say because they're, you know, they're considered secondary use. But what we're considering is there's enough times where we have enough accidents um, and challenges, bridge challenges, you know, challenges, which or pushing traffic onto specifically that that's on traffic roads. So it's one of the issues that I think a lot of residents mm -hmm. problems with. Right. And it's got to be a lot more severe over the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, as far as actual language that we could put in there, that would make sense. I, I can I can put some more thought into it. It's just a bunch of answer now but um yeah aside from encouraging coordination between you know enforcement law enforcement that type of thing to i mean maybe something like that could fall under a circulation element where 
in kind of evaluating the roads and the intensities and what makes sense. Um, some of these roads in Mr. Mayor, you brought up one of the roads that they thought were um township people even thought it was uh like our road, but it's not it's like that. So I kind of you know Jared and Tom Sharon, so you know it's a bit of your state road and it's county road. Yes. And so the engineer and I have over the years multiple times have gone to the county, you know, one time about Charlestown Road, one time about Asbury West Portal. And like you said, they're like DOT regulated. So the highway is primary, 173 secondary, and then those county roads are considered tertiary or they call them relief valve roads. So that they wouldn't change speed limits or modify them to lower speeds in any certain way because they actually, while we don't want them to be, they're designed to be those relief valves for those highways, you know, from times of accidents. It's just that the accidents are occurring probably a whole lot more than anybody anticipated right. the road system is designed. Uh, so that's the challenge of the solution too. We don't necessarily so state police does try to control as best they can, right. but it's, it's, there's no solution that we can control our own uh, without having to work with the county, and they're not willing to take any steps because they're saying it's part of the DOT system. So I know one thing that potentially do um, is if and when the county does the circulation element. Um, and I'll just give Somerset as an example the region of the circulation element right now. And they've allowed for a lot of public input and have taken actually a lot of account to what some of the towns have been saying. For, I'm just saying for Rocky Hill and they have cut for and they're looking to get that diverted. Um, so, and it was a lot of working with the county and their planner and getting like us involved to like write letters and write letters of support. So, I mean, I will say if you throw it up with a stink, it might get it might get like a lot. Take it away. <laughs> Wait, Princeton, that's the best time. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we can see that. Well, I'll be to 100 and yeah. maybe in that process. Yeah. That's not good. Uh, all right, the next question was re we request appropriate language for section E of the master plan. And unfortunately, there was a paper rustling and over talk, so I couldn't go onto the audio and really drill into that. So, what is section? This was redevelopment. Yeah, the recommended redevelopment plans. Uh, and then the, the comment that's in there just briefly it says the township does not have any designated areas in need of redevelopment or rehabilitation. The township may want to consider designated areas in need of rehabilitation as a means to foster appropriate economic development, particularly along New Jersey Route 173 with the GC, General Commercial, HC, Highway Commercial, NC, Neighborhood Commercial, Manufacturing and ROM. Uh, research and office. Uh, all new development should be sensitive to the rural character of the township. So this also includes maybe an explanation of pilots. Okay. So yeah. what is basically permitted under a redevelopment? Oh. Well, I have a question so, on that. So if you, if you designate an area in need of redevelopment, doesn't that usually mean blinded? Not so much. No, not really. No, no it could be there's seven or eight different criteria that it can fall under. Um, it can be where it just doesn't make sense with the land use pattern anymore, where it's been on land owners turned over so many times, there's tax liens that and it's not really like like to be So sometimes these development plans they become an issue up to themselves. They may recommend something that's good for that road, but may not be good for the township. So we have to be very careful about that. Uh, yes, um, 173 needs work <laughs> as far as trying to improve the establishment there, et cetera. But do we need other types of high volume, traffic volume type of uh, businesses here? So there has to be a balance. And that's the good thing about a redevelopment plan is the townships have a lot more say in that site plan than just, you know, market value coming in, someone coming to you and saying, this is what we want to do. There's typically a give and take. And, yeah, the townships have to involved in this. 
Yeah, it's, it, I, so I went through a redevelopment. Were you involved in <laughs> yeah. So we went through a redevelopment together, and it's a lot. We were approached by a developer that, hey, we want to do something on this piece of property. And it's a negotiation. At the end of the day, the council really is who approves the redevelopment overlay and plan. But there were many, many meetings back and forth negotiating what was going to go on on that property. And it is a lot different than yeah. like we as a board just accepting a set of plans and, you know, going back and forth. So there, there's a lot more input. Yeah, and, and actually the one that he was talking about in the Royal Farm and the township was able to um, have it put in a really nice big club under the township side and we were able to ask them to put in a uh, spike rack, that type of thing that would have not normally gone under there, especially since they have a very formulaic it's Royal Farm. It's like they come, this is their plan, and they actually really made the site nice. And what I'm worried about is this, this passage does include some of that qualifying language. I mean, it talks about a means to foster appropriate economic activity. Uh, and then the last line about all new development should be sensitive to the rural character of the township. So there is a little bit of structure. I, think, I shared in, um, yeah, I don't want to publish, I don't want to speak for him, but years ago, uh, Mr. Jimenez, when he was on the committee with me, we went to the League of Municipalities together and sat through uh, what what does it look like to designate an area and need a redevelopment. And then uh, you can probably share from yourself the next meeting and we talk about open space. But I, I think uh, I think Mr. Manis is probably more conservative than I am on the economic development side, and has appeared comfortable with what an area in need of redevelopment looked like because it's not you craft it; it's not set to like we want to build, you know, multi high rise and warehouses. It, it was more meant to address the inconsistency along the highway, and so you can limit it to that. Just how do we better create, like you said, they could use some. Please. Please. And, and you kind of craft it to that, but it makes it easier to do that and incentivize. I would say easier. I would say incentivize is probably uh, the planners to incentivize is probably a better way to make it easier. Uh, but it's not, we kind of set what that looks like. It's not, uh, and that's why that's in here, the language in the master plan itself, but it's, it's to be consistent with the world character of Bethlehem, but to create, to correct some of the inconsistency that can be more beneficial to the town. Because you mentioned something, sometimes if you don't have a plan, a developer will come in and says, I'm proposing this. It may fall not what you want, but you don't have a plan. So then the negotiations start, and you start behind the eight ball at that point if you don't have a plan. So that's actually this would be beneficial. So. Mm -hmm. Like I said, so well, a bit more detail, but yeah. Well, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, it has to be. But it, it, and it is a concept that bring it up because it's, um, you know, John and I are on the committee together, and it's been probably 10 years. So, you know, this is a topic that's been kind of kicked around for a long time uh, in Bethlehem anyway, uh, but it has to be crafted appropriately. I think at the time, back 10 years ago, we didn't have the understanding to do anything with it. I think John and I laughed and were like, wow, that could be a great tool. And, but we didn't know what to do with it. We weren't in the position at the time to have these discussions. We weren't in the master plan review. So uh, it may be something to, to look at as we go through. Now. All right, last question. Uh, Bethlehem Township is interested in EV charging stations in public places, including Heritage Park. Could you provide language for this in section F of the master plan? Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you wanted to go out with a saucer. Thank you, Ron. Yeah, those questions. Any other board members have any questions or concerns that they'd like to address? Yeah, you're right now. Yeah. You've answered quite a few. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'm going to have the 
I want to open it up to the public if there are any public comments right now that might make us think. Motion to open to the public. Second. Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. Any, any comments from the public or questions? Suzanne? Did you have a question for Trial Center? Is this public comments in, just in general or just on the elementary? This is about what we're discussing. If there's any questions, oh. concerns like But you'll open public yeah. for just general public comments today? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Andrew Lappy, excuse me. Three Farrow Lane. Um, just a comment on the light matter. Personally, I had my vehicle stolen, as you know, Mr. Mint, out of the community, you know, where we have nice things. Um, the problem isn't the light. The problem is that there's no consequence for the crime. So we may fix the light problem, but at the end of the day, when they go through the criminal justice system, they get no consequence whatsoever. So they continue to do it. So it may be a useful time for the board to look at the lighting issues, but at the same time, it might be useful for the committee to look at the legislation, le excuse me, legislation issues so that it doesn't happen to anybody else. Because at the end of the day, our most valuable assets, other than our physical assets, are our houses, our vehicles, and our personal property. So lighting is a good issue to focus on, but at the same time, they don't care if they're not going to get prosecuted to the full extent of the law. So that's just something that I wanted to make sure was commented on since it was brought up in a little bit of detail. So. Well, Thank light, you. Light should definitely have the purview of, of what we are. Unfortunately, the, the legal system does not require the things the capture committee has too much say over that. Yeah, I'll share more next next Thursday, but just, sure. Yeah, there's people still to the planning board, but but briefly we you know we're setting up actually I had a mayor from uh, Bernard Township reach out to me uh, as president of the Commons of Mayors, uh, and we're looking to put or we are actually putting it together and she'll be the chairperson of the subcommittee. Uh, to address bail reform as well as, like I said, community support. Because I, uh, I think in New Jersey it's it's a difficult conversation. We talk about, like you said, we have nice things. So you have a community asking to protect our nice things, but then you have uh, an urban community where youth are, you know, essentially forced or given the option to steal cars because there's nothing else for them. So we're actually looking to put together a task force uh, statewide so we address both things. So we asked about bail reform so that. Uh, there are consequences, but we also recognize that there's a reason these youth are jumping into the auto theft rings. And can we work with the legislature and elected officials in those areas as well in a cooperative to do a full wraparound, maybe provide some other opportunities and prevent people from you know jumping in on the crime side? So it's not you know suburban versus urban. We're looking to work together to solve this problem. Right. Because with the master plan, we're going to be bringing in more businesses, more traffic more influx of people. So as that happens, it's gonna magnify just the overall population, not necessarily residents, but of people coming into the town. So overall, that's something I'm glad that you're looking at. And I know that it's not the planning board's place to necessarily look at the legislation, le legislation point, but lights used to deter people because there was a consequence. Now lighting, I had plenty of lighting at my house. It wasn't the lighting. It was the fact that I had a nice truck. So thank you, Karen. Suzanne. So if, I know I have some comments. I gave them to the environmental commission, and, but based on what was her, uh, Megan's answers tonight. Should I raise them, or can they raise them, or should we wait till public comment? Or? You were there. There you can, you can make your comments. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, first thing for the um, the split zone. Uh, I'm not in agreement with the split zone highway commercial, not residential. I think that we need to buffer. And I think that I understand it's hard to decide, determine 
where that one zone is and the other ends. But I think the perfect example, the highway commercial, not residential, does create a buffer between that highway commercial and the residential properties behind it. The um, the split zones where it's like the R1, R5, that definitely seems like a no brainer to try to combine because like the property owner that came in and had to get whatever the variance is because they were on two separate lots makes more sense to me to combine it. But um, that's that. And um, um, the um, warehouses not permitted versus prohibited. I personally like the word prohibited. And I think just relying on the Highlands, what the Highlands states is a little bit punting and problematic. Um, I understand they give guidelines and they did write a paper for it, but in my mind, there's nothing to that I think would be beneficial to the town if we don't want warehouses, which I don't think I do, to explicitly state that. And then the concept of redevelopment, I understand redevelopment kind of sounds good, but if I'm remembering correctly, that's what opened up, I think it was Franklin Township to the warehouse because it was redevelopment. And I believe, I could be wrong on this, that it also allows for some waivers with the Highlands Preservation areas, which all of 173 is in. So again, for opening us up to potential warehouses. And I liked Jose's comment about, you know, explicitly stating about truck stops because I think they can become problematic as well. And there was one last thought, but I forgot. Oh, so I know we don't have it yet, but it was in the uh, New York Times. They were talking about the uh, bit mine operations and they're not that, it's that large, but they typically target rural areas and they're extremely bad environmentally. You can't go outside because of the noise. They suck up resources. So I don't know if we want to think about that, kind of trying to think about the future and what might be coming down the pike that way. And I think that was it based on the questions. And I think the questions that were asked were very good. So that was great. Thank you. Any other questions for the public? Anybody on Zoom? Motion to close. Motion to close. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Another one of them. We didn't have a direct question, but um, we discussed it for for some like the um, the neighborhood commercial zone, here, which is the West Portal section. Um, a lot of the older houses in in plus one seventy three. Um, the original municipal building is part the parcel over there. Um, the Hawk School is over there. Um, there's, there's, there's chatter about the school possibly closing. Um, so that puts a piece of a, a decent piece of of property um, there, which is four bed property. But I whether they keep it or put it back to the town. So they were concerned about what could be done as far as. That section we have um, Jacktown Mountain Park, which is Hardin County, which is um, all mountain range. Mm -hmm. um, so we had a discussion about what we could um, to do in that section. Maybe um, what, what we just talked about as far as um, redevelopment mm -hmm. would be possible in that that area, which is historic. Uh, Bed and breakfast, the benefit of stuff like that. So maybe it ends up, and then it's, it's, it's I'm glad you brought that up so we can kind of focus on that in 173. You do have that, that's, that is a, 
in the historic part of town. So it is something too where we could potentially uh, in the section where we do talk about where it is appropriate for redevelopment. Um, but I mean, in general, is that kind of an area that is, you know, you look favorable for redevelopment? Because in that case, we can also say, um, as we do say, you should be sensitive to the moral character. We can also add something into you know, the historic character of certain areas, kind of that language into the, the redevelopment section. That was one specific area. So I'll put them over. Okay. Anybody else? So just to clarify, is there something that we wanted to add to the definition of neighborhood commercial or well again, what so what what we were so originally neighborhood commercial, I'm remembering correctly we had definitions that had changed. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about um what was allowed so from from basically some shops, bagel shops to walks to offices to um I think the, so the, the proposed definition here is for neighborhood commercial is uses such as small grocery store, general or specialty stores which furnish convenience goods and services to meet the daily needs of residents of the municipality. Right. I think part of that discussion, at least from my viewpoint, was that none of those uses could literally be put into that neighborhood right now. Right. I mean, you couldn't park them, you couldn't park anything, you can't park there, you can't. There's no sign. You really can't get into the drive through bobby. I can stand outside of the car. Put a hot pocket then, it's. And I think that's the that's about the property, property that would have been the, the hotel, hotel yeah, the the hotel, yeah. Put it back to the hotel, but otherwise, I mean, I think I always took me where commercial would be like you know, small doctor's office and attorney's mm -hmm. office, mm -hmm. you know, the accountant or something that might have two cars, I agree something with like that. Yeah. And that's I thought that's what's allowed now. Um, no, so I think that's what is allowed now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then this got changed. Um, so I, I think you kind of have to at least add into that definition why well, I all this is here. Well, I think, you know, so, so think the hotel, for example, it's a private residence now. Parking is the issue, but then if they somebody to decide, like, I, I'd be a little cautious about taking something away because maybe there could be a general or specialty store there, but then it's up to that person to figure out what the parking looks like when they come to us for a site plan, whereas if you take it out, nobody's ever going to look at that in any other way. So it gives an option in what is a you know, traditionally commercial zone, even though it's largely residential at this point. What the school may or may not be closing, that's certainly, that area certainly has enough parking in the back, to the side, in front, and it's walking distance to what we're talking about. Absolutely. I mean, there's yeah. Well, the yes and no, because there's no sidewalks, right? I mean, you know, well, there's no sidewalks. That's why I shared too. Like, I would take something away because like, if you look at Asbury and Warren County and Franklin Township, um, well, they are kind of ushered by the Mustang and Congo Watershed Association. They received grants and they're doing a neighborhood a redevelopment, if you will, that includes sidewalks and walking yeah. paths and walking abilities, and a lot of it's funded through grants. So it's things that didn't exist, and like parking would be shared actually with the church. And then create walkability because during the week, if they have a small office, they don't have parking with the church is being used during the week. So there's a good agreement there, but then put in a crosswalk and a sidewalk. It's not there yet now. This is, this is like the plan that's in the works. So it still keeps the character of that downtown, um, but but adds some um, greater abilities based on the, the walkability and connect and connections uh, through this neighborhood designation. And it's, it's our area is smaller than that, but it's very similar. Yeah. So for these definitions, we want to I mean, keep all the stuff, but also include the things that, like the smaller things, like the the doctor's offices, the attorneys, like that type of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I guess it would be being at yeah. I mean, since the park uh, in the township owns or might own some of the property. That's on the one side. So, and, and just and then the county has a substantial chunk of that. So, 
you know, the, the, the plan is hatched, I think it's it's doable to have sidewalks up there. You know, you do have the staying in, which has a lot of real estate towards the back. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a parking agreement could be made. Okay. Yeah, the <laughs> former pool. But we're not talking large scale. We talk, we're talking small scale. Yeah, yeah, small scale. But yeah, yeah, neighborhood. A neighborhood thing, and, and you know, it could, you know, as, as you know, my feeling is, is we have a park there, and it'd be great to actually have trails that go up into the park, and then start start connecting, you know, with Tower Hill and everything else, which doesn't really exist. But you know, people could come down for the day hiking. And then it's entirely possible that you know, maybe a, a coffee shop works yeah. or something like that. And we talked in the past too about like healthcare offices, not necessarily meaning doctors, but MRIs, things like that, rather than saying, what do you think? Not rather than saying, like, doctor's office. You can have small, look at Huntington Healthcare, St. Luke's, they're always looking for hot patches and to keep it a nice little thing. So you're not going into a massive building, but you're going for your CAT scan, you're going for your MRI, you're going for your PET scan to some place that's a little, there's nothing called the doctor's office, it's a little more simple and more welcoming. Um, healthcare well, offices. Healthcare is still in yes. So would that also mean you say senior daycare? Or well, healthcare office. If, if you want to consider it healthcare offices, if you talk healthcare facilities, so that opens up a whole another thing, a whole another vein of things. Day centers, yes, people come and then they go. But you've got a stream running right through that. So whatever you develop and you put in there, you got to be mindful of, of the bump ups and everything. Yeah. Oh, no. Right. So that's what that that's even, even further track. Yeah, but look at some of the little little satellite things that doctors' offices and um, healthcare offices strewn throughout the towns out here. Unterton brought up a lot of them that used to be private practices and things. Yep. We can make that, yeah. Yeah, I don't think you're changing the footprint that no. I have with the commercials. So I don't think it wouldn't be impacted. It's just the, the use and then the parking has to be created. Right. right. Yeah, they can design it around you. So where we have a deep like professional offices. That professional or do you want to say professional, i.e. healthcare offices, things like that? They don't see. Yeah, <laughs> that's why people need their coffee before they go in. <clears throat> as long as they're not in PO, you can have anything about health that means <laughs> before their test. Right. And even the day center. People come and go, nobody's living there. Yeah. They have closed holidays, adult day centers. Closed at night. Yeah. Okay. All right. That was our conversation. Should we have to get something finalized? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's not, there's not a whole lot. So I mean, if you can do this over there, it's kind of easy. All right. So um, the next meeting would be March 11th. Um, that would be, is that maybe doable for us to have um, that at least if the meeting is on Monday, that we would have it by the prior Wednesday. I'm not looking at a calendar. Is there? Is there yes. Yeah. Yep, said, yeah, absolutely. So that that can then be sent out to the board mm -hmm. and then it can be presented to the board on the 11th and it could be voted on to go and, and to put it up publicly so that that by that Thursday would be the goal to have it on the website. Does that sound like a, an, a, re, a reasonable timeline? How long do we need to put it uh, on the website, keep it out there for public too? That was my next question. Um, so, um, if we put it up, let's say, I believe that's the 14th. If it gets up on the website by the 14th, um, when do we want to have the public comment? Do we think that by um, a week is long enough or do we want to push it for the next? So that would be the first meeting of April. I would go for the first meeting of April, give people an opportunity. Um, yeah, we put it up on the 14th, the next meeting is the 25th, so it's only 11 days. Mm -hmm. Or we give them another two weeks. So we'll it in the so you put it in the 14th, how many gives people uh, 11 days to the next meeting? 
I'm going to put it there. For the first the three meeting meeting meetings, basically, it's it's April. April. the first meeting for us April. is the eighth of April. Uh -huh. There we go. There you go. Which, by the way, our meeting dates are in our fine packet here on the left hand side. Unless people <laughs> took it home with something. <laughs> okay, so just so that everybody knows that if we, if if that's the decision, because it has to be publicized, it actually has to be um, advertised and what have you in advance to give the public the most notice. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, April. April will April, be April. the public comment. So then you'll be able to be here. Mm -hmm. For that, Kenny, do you want anyone else, any like Kara or John here? Yeah, we'll have Kara. And then March 6th for the draft report. The next Wednesday, right? Yes. Okay. Is there any way you could get that continue on the fifth? I apologize. I'm leaving for Nebraska. Yeah. Thank you. I just don't want to be the reason it's held up. That's all. Right, I need a motion to the public for general questions and comments. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 He's in Wilder, 424 Charlestown Road. At, uh, I think it was the January 22nd meeting, you adopted the you adopted your bylaws and you put in uh, limits on time. I just, I don't have a copy here. Is there any way that I could? The public can get a copy of uh, the bylaws with the, the options for the time limits. I I I just got the lawyer. I I made the changes. I had the lawyer check it literally an hour before we came to meeting. So I'll get that out. I'll give it to Lou. We'll get it up on the website. Okay, does that seem appropriate, guys? And and just a question: Do you remember if there was a time limit if there, when there's a hearing, an actual hearing? The guidelines of the well, hearing. It's the amount of people. So end of being um, one to the I mean, it's, oh, it's that's okay. That's okay. Apply to the hearing. It apply to any public comment when a certain number of people yeah. is the way that it was based. I, I thought I remembered from that meeting that it was based like public comment here now is different right than a hearing. No, no. no. It's, oh, it's okay. Being, okay. Yeah, it, then I remembered wrong. But I'll read the copy when it's up. Thank you. And there's a time, I mean, as you said, with the, the final the time limitation plan, there are less than share equitable participation. When the intended public ranges from 15 to 29 individuals, including applicants, each person is granted up to five minutes for comment. Should attendance exceed 30, the limit reduces to three minutes per individual aligning with the board's meeting duration outline and section. You know, so a total of three hours of violence. So it's less than 30 out of the five minutes, over 30 people, it's capped at three minutes. Yeah. And again, if you understand our meetings, you know, are up to 10 30, so it's we only have so much time for what's to be done anyway. But, <clears throat> You know, if there's 50 people, we got to do the math. We need enough help. Any other questions or comments? Enter. Andrew Laffey, Three Power Lane. Just a quick question about the repaving in Woods at Fox Farm. Any idea when that's going to start? Because they started marking out the road uh, last Thursday. So just so we have a way to prepare to understand when that's going to happen. We'll, we'll put out notice. Uh, if you want to bring that question to the Township Committee meeting. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. I'll ask Mr. Decker. I don't, I just don't know. Uh, okay. But I, think, uh, I think the second bid still has to go out. Okay. It's, it's, two, it's two years of the DFC grants that are combined into one project. Understood. So, so I don't have dates, Mr. Decker, by the Township Committee. 
Okay. Thank you. And we'll, like I said, we'll put it up on the website if they can do that. Also, so just for general public, we do chip seal. We also will put that up on the website so people know what roads are doing. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else? Any motion to close? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then minutes for February 12. <laughs> 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 I make a motion to accept the minutes of the state of the state of the of the state 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 of the the state of the 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 only thing we added is you know, affordable housing is our next uh, hurdle with our master plan. Uh, so uh, I, I put up a shed last meeting, so I'm forgetting all the timing of it. Uh, but the um, state assembly bill did pass for affordable housing. It's uh, in the Senate committee, or it was on Thursday. Uh, I assume it'll go to the Senate relatively quickly. I spent Thursday uh, on an advisory committee with New Jersey Future, which is a nonprofit organization uh, that advocates for uh, sustainable, affordable housing. Uh, so it's was, it was interesting because uh, out of 30 people, there are only four municipalities. The rest were the you know, nonprofits, fair share, the director was there, building associations. Uh, so I'm just bringing up as an update that we'll, we'll have something we're going to have to deal with. Right now, it looks like uh, you know, our initial number uh, would be 172 affordable units for Bethlehem Township based on the next round. Uh, or, or as we did last round, we'll be going and looking to see what we can negotiate and what the process is for that. There's some different mechanisms uh, this year or this round. Uh, round four starts in 2025. The only thing I'd share though, from the planning board standpoint from the, the New Jersey Future uh, conference, or it's not a conference of advisory, they'll, they'll be doing a conference in the spring. Uh, something that Kara had shared, and I don't know what the, I think went to the whole board about the accessory buildings. Mm -hmm. You know, that was brought up at, 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 the, at this um, advisory committee meeting as well. And it seems like um, there's going to be a trend in New Jersey going forward to try to pull um, some land use away from municipalities up into the state level. And so I think it's something that we need to be aware of as we go. So the successory use is a perfect example. They're taking, they're looking to take it away from the purview of the municipality. So they need to put accessory uses uh, and, and, and that becomes a state approval and not a local. And so I would just kind of, mm -hmm. as a township committee, we're, we'll be aware of it, but just as a planning board, uh, I, I, I'm going to guess that's kind of a trend we're going to see in New Jersey in the next couple of years. And so we should be aware of that how we design our ordinances and try to protect us as best we can. Pretty much we've done that. They give us money to do what they want. Yes. They're in control. I don't disagree. Try to do what we can. Yeah. You know, play back a little bit. Yeah. Weird. Um, yeah, so last week I, I attended the um, Hunterdon County um, Department of, I guess, uh, Tourism, and they were um, 
lively committee, lively discussion around increasing and supporting the townships regarding tourism, um, some economic um, development conversations were had as well regarding not so much a town like ours, but something like Clinton that has a lot of small businesses, how to best support the small businesses. The SBA was there, uh, representatives from New Jersey Transit were there regarding um, train service, which still probably won't be out here anytime soon. Um, but then I expressed, I had shared a couple of our ordinances per your instructions, Paul, um, regarding accessory use, our home-based businesses and, and what that may turn out to look like. And they were in full support of anything that we want to do in this town, as well as the fact that they know that 173 is being looked at and they're willing to support us whatever, however we might need them to. So it was a good discussion. It was pretty high level, but very good. That was it. Subcommittees, I don't believe there's been any meetings since. Um, any board members or anything? And Monica, I'm going to go through. So, um, just first of all, um, as you guys know, I sent out the, the article about the accessory building and how they're doing different things, just in case somebody hasn't read them. I did send those out for everybody. I had a conversation with um, Herbert um, August at Highlands Council today. And, um, you know, the big part for me was to figure out the billing and um, to understand how we have the one grant but it's two different projects and how we can best build that. So that's now going to be resolved by the end of the week. I'm hoping to be able to process all of that and get that taken care of because that backlog has been very bothersome to me. Um, I did talk to them about the ERI um, and that there isn't funding for that, that they fund the first ERI. And then they have a robust um, section of their website where you can basically generate it off their website, any updates and what have you. I did print out how to do that. I have no familiarity with that, but I do have it available. So I'll go ahead and give it to you if you need it. Mm -hmm. um, he did talk to me about the community energy plan and he would entertain, or Highlands would entertain a grant request um, with regard to the community energy plan. Um, it would be an, a study to yeah. analyze and determine best placement and viability for like charging stations and such but it would need to be submitted as an alternative energy and transportation element or under the circulation element, submitted to, you know, submit the, the scope of work and they'll have a look at that for us. If we want to do something more along the lines of solar or home backup batteries, Highland Council is currently working on guidelines for resilience and climate change effects. So there's not granting grants for that as much as they are expecting to have um, guidance is out there. With regard to dark sky, um, islands would be very interested in funding a planning study for light pollution as it's consistent with the regional master plan. Um, regarding the warehouse ordinance or what we want to do with regard to our ordinances that affect the warehouse um, implications, Island Council has funding available to help generate and give us um, assistance with wording for an ordinance related to proper placement of warehouse in the Highlands Preserve um, municipalities. Hope Township um, recently requested and was granted the funds for the purpose to um, deter um, having warehouses in the preserve uh, and the highlands areas. Um, the other um, initiative that the chairman has asked me to undertake is getting educational opportunities for the board. Um, one of those he asked is to bring in um, highlands so that they can talk to us and I discussed that with him. And he said, absolutely, let us know what you want. He envisions it as having them come talk about our partnership, how much um, has been accomplished, what are the successes for Bethlehem Township, what direction can we go to, um, and how can they be uh, an advocate and a partner for us. Um, they said that if there's any nitty gritty kind of planning that needs to be done, obviously, you know, have it as a public meeting, but also um, if we need any of their specific assistance, they're available also for executive session, if that becomes relevant or necessary. So that was that conversation, which was very productive and 
and answered a lot of my questions, which made me very happy. And as a reminder, um, on the 11th, I will not be here. So when the master plan is presented, I'll, I'll ask Kara to do that um, so that she can get the vote and what have you, so that we don't have a hiccup with that. And for example, we would take memo notes. That would be sure. we'll greatly appreciated. Sure. And uh, we'll just have to figure out how to turn it on the seven year old. So that's all I've got. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, to the Highland conversation, I'm looking at, at doing quarterly um, learning experiences. All right, Harris then put together uh, on, on our walk meeting um, some learning or uh, going back over some of the things that, that we are rusty on. Okay. Um, so basically, um, she's going to be going over C, uh, C and D variances and Okay, we're gonna start with that. It'll be during, or it'll be at the end of the meeting. Um, uh, the public's gonna be able to sit there and listen to it if they so choose. Um, some of it might be boring, but it gives it might give them an idea of what we have to actually look at when we're granting you know, or um, not approving that. Um, we try to do that quarterly, not over over. Yeah, All right. With that, I don't have anything else. Bill? So, motion to adjourn.